85 South Show, Big Minutes Tour. Arizona, Get your tickets. Nigga? Arizona is going to be hot. Nigga? It's going to be fire. It's going to be smoking. Smoking. <laughs> I don't even have to say nothing because it's been said already. Fuck you talking about? Well, sundress. Smoking. No cap. Get your tickets. Why would you wear drawers with a sundress? That don't even make sense. That's, you that's see in the panel line sometimes, you know, that shit's stupid. Like, yeah, this went girl. too far, but we ain't came to Tempe, Arizona yet. June 21st, get your tickets. I know it's gonna be hot time. Make it hot time. Smoke it. Man, Carlos Miller just here to let you know that we are expanding the merchandise department. Look at this, check out these pastel colors that we got. You feel me? What's that, light purple? What's that, like, it's a boy blue? What's this right here? This, like, oh, you think you cute? You just think you cute with this shit on, don't you? Look, that's right. That's 85 South. Make sure you go hit the website, 85apparelco.com. And I'm telling you, we taking over, bro. I think the ladies is going to really enjoy these right here. And I'm talking about for all the hustlers out there, that's if you're still living, grab you something that say 85 South on it, bro. I'm talking about a t-shirt. I'm talking about a hat. I'm talking about some socks. I'm talking about a something. It ain't nothing to it. Hit the website. It's right here. You see where my fingers point? That's where the website go. Make sure you put the website right here. But look, go out there and support the 85 South Show. You Want to hear some more dope ass killer mic shit? You got to do your own research. But I know each and every song I put them bitches in order, and I give you a study guide to um, motherfucking go. Make sure you listen to all the run the jewels. I don't know for whatever reason I feel like a lot of black people missed that one, but that that whole series is crazy. The last time I went to see the motherfucking Run the Jewels concert was at the Masquerade, I think. I think it was on. I went to one and two, I think. Yeah, that shit was hard though. Um, play me some pimpy, man. Let's get let's get motherfucking situated in here. Cause you know, I, as much as I love them other niggas' raps, I got I got my own volume of pimping that's going on over here. Me and J O N together, seven hundred and thirty-two snippets, nigga. No songs. <laughs> Cause every week he he'll bring me some shit just like that, bro. How many you got? 732 snippets. You feel me? Cause I was rolling with this cutie that I met up in the lobby. Her face wasn't all that, but I really digged her body. And uh, she's with somebody, but I don't really care. Cause that ass over there made me say, God damn, I'm looking at the titties. They so pretty while they sitting up. She texting me some silly shit and I don't really give a fuck. Not trying to say too much, cause I don't wanna fuck that up. I wanna fill up on a coochie and do a bunch of other stuff. I'm nasty. I'm like a black jelly and I'm a real nigga out here looking for a black queen And if you see me on the go, say low, cause that's my name And you know everything ain't the same, ain't it, man? I let them hang cause they big and they hairy and they swole Put them bitches on your chin and put the dick down in your throat If you don't believe me, shit, I got some proof of all my work And I ain't like Bill Clinton, she gotta swallow it, not on her shirt Cause that's how niggas get caught and then have to go to court Cause they been fucking too many hoes and now they done came up short you gotta explain God. that you ain't a real freaky ass man And then trying to tell the judge But hell, he ain't gonna understand Cause he been fucking the same white lady <laughs> for like 40 years And he gonna look you in your face and say Nigga, 100 years, it can't be me Cause I ain't the type of nigga that do all that But matter of fact, fuck that And let's go back to where we was at <laughs> Start it over, bring it back and get another one And make it cold and tight just like the other one My mama oldest son, shit that be me And I done made it out of Mississippi and made it all the way to TV And everybody yeah. seen me, they be like, do your thing And I be like, hell yeah, it's just a job, ain't it, man? <laughs> but not really, cause they gotta sit in that check Now welcome back to the 85 South Show and who we got next? Hey. Yo! Yeah! yeah. This beat is for sale. Me and J.O.N. selling beats and hooks and features. Hi. Yeah, you got to make sure you get your ass in early before the price go up. We selling features all summer. Y'all been asking? The features is open. The studio open. We got our own situation now. Sitting the motherfucking open verses and the, and the money. And I'm charging because it's me. Especially if you ain't known, I can put you on. Hey. Even if the song ain't good like that, we can make it good. We can make it look good. And then the video is a separate price from oh. the feature. That was next question. I do the video, but you got to pay me to be in the video because the shit going crazy. I'm bringing my own old school 
I'm, I'm bringing my own love interest, so <laughs> my own security, everything. I'm bringing everything my own, so you got to pay for it. No bullshit. Hit me if you want this feature. Yes, sir. You should be able to afford it if you're rapping right. And if you can't afford it, I'm going to cut you a deal on the price, and then we're just going to work out the back end. <laughs> but today, we about to talk big shit, because we got a motherfucking... A motherfucking comedy legend in here with us today, yes, man. Sir. This nigga done been everywhere and then did everything and talked shit and made the money and came back with it and, and been holding it down the whole time, bro. Now, if you if you ever stop through Atlanta or if you ever been to a comedy show in Atlanta or if you know anything about Atlanta when it comes to laughing, rapping, hip-hop, the entertainment world, you definitely know who my next guest is, man, because this nigga has... Came into the game and left his mark, bro. That None all. other. One of the most original niggas that you will ever see. I'm talking about crazy as a motherfucker. Come on stage and do whatever the fuck he feel like doing. <laughs> I done seen him do some wild shit, man. This is my nigga. This is my dog. And we celebrating him today, man. He been meaning to get over here and talk some shit with us, but we got none other than comedian Shorty. 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 You feel me? <laughs> what my sir, name what's up, is? Man, no, yes, long man. time coming, bro. Yes, man. Happy long to be time here, coming, man. man. Yes, hey, sir. we happy to have you. Yo, First man. of all, how you doing, brother? Man, bless, man. Can't complain. God Don't do it to me. You Absolutely. I'm healthy. I'm living. I'm joking. Nigga, aging in reverse. You heard me. The only nigga I know get younger and older at the <laughs> same <laughs> time. Shout out to age in reverse, <laughs> nigga. Hey, man. You know, you got health as well. So, you know, Don't say that while I'm drinking my Dr. Pepper. Bro, they be on my ass. <laughs> hey, my, my old lady worked for one of them big companies. She come in house with cases though. Bro, I fuck with them Dr. Pepper, bro. Yeah. That's your shit. That's my shit. That's your shit. Motherfuckers say that's an old nigga drink. Everything I do, they're just gonna associate with old nigga. Dr. Pepper is. is nigga told me on Twitter best. that Dr. Pepper tastes like barbecue water. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, nigga. What is he doing drinking barbecue water? I don't know. That was just you, some dumb shit to think. When you smell it, you can smell it and see kind of what it tastes like. <laughs> I ain't Dr. know it was an obscure drink like that. But well, why is it that me as a Dr. Pepper drinker, everywhere I go, they always add a Dr. Pepper first? You're not the only one drinking. I love that shit. I must be a redneck at heart or something. Yeah. Coke and Dr. Pepper. But Dr. Pepper ain't even a redneck drink. They fuck with that diet Mountain Dew heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like Sprite. You fuck with Sprite? I, I like Sprite. That McDonald's Sprite will clear your goddamn sound. Hey, when you up in the morning, <laughs> hey, <laughs> boy, it got, it, 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 it's something else. You're not lying. <laughs> and one time they got them fizz, I swear it came out my eye, nigga. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that doctor, hey, that McDonald's drink do be strong as fuck, bro. Yeah. They fuck you up when you see them mix the shit. I got mad as fuck when they got rid of that orange high C. They bought it back. I know. I went, I go just for that. Yeah. I can't fuck with the food. I Man, can't. they got the best breakfast now. Hey, that I be up early. That oatmeal is, is is number one in calories and yeah. in, in, in nutrition. I just eat that. That's how you done, you done got to that point in life. Nigga, you count calories. Well, I try to watch <laughs> my sugar and tell you, I don't want to get that fat wrapped back around me no hey, more. Hey, man, I heard that, bro. You lost a bunch of weight. Yeah. I can't came out my waist shape. You know? <laughs> got some abs. See you sneaking and eating them in there. See, hey, you didn't hey. caught your head eating them in there. Somebody killed <laughs> I didn't know about you, right? My, so my wife had them on the counter, and I, I ate one, and they taste like um, Reese's. A little bit. Yeah, they got a peanut butter in it. So yeah. I, I found, I saw them in the gas station. Let me grab them Man. for the munchies. Heard that. Nice. Yo, caught your ass. He yeah, talking about calories. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nigga sneaking and eating them in there. Sneaking and geeking them in there. Hell no, man. Shout it, motherfucking shout it, man. We been out here in Atlanta, man. And I know this is your hometown. Born yeah. and raised, bro. Africa. Bro, where you start comedy at in the city? What was your first spot? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right. So the first time. Close your jacket. Oh, oh Jesus. You don't want the Eminem. Yeah, I don't want the Eminem to hop out. Them little guys start hopping out, running all over the floor. Yeah, you put them. Yeah. So um, first time I hit the stage, I was 18 years old. And I said, at first, I was lying that I was a comedian. This how, this how comedy came into my life. Mm. I just uh, turned 17. I caught a big big case. Damn. I got sentenced. The judge said, uh, you got to go to boot camp. And so he said, but you, before you go to boot camp, you're going to finish school. And so you got to go to school. And then the summer, next summer, you're going to go to boot camp. Damn. He said, the only way you ain't going to boot camp is you be an angel. And you, you know, boot camp, they had to cut grass on the side of the road. It'd be snakes. It's hot. You know what I mean? 
So I wasn't cut for that. So I went back to school, and I, 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 I had my school thing going. I, I was on intense probation. So I had to go report to this probation officer every day. And everybody Damn. report at the same time. Her name was Diane Lambert. And you had to stand up in the hallway at attention because all these folks only way to boot camp. Hold so, up. You had to go report every day? And every you day. Intense. It's oh, super intense. At the same time. At the same yeah. time. And then I, I, and so I was in school, but everybody else would get a piece of paper and they had to go apply for 10 jobs and come back with the 10 jobs and numbers. You know what I'm saying? It was post boot camp and after boot camp. So she's the boot camp officer. Damn. Man, I went in there one time and so I had a South Def Comedy Jam. I saw Bruce Bruce, I saw Arturo Shelton. And I'm sitting there looking at Def Comedy Jam in my den, and I'm like, that's what I be doing in the car porch when we smoking. I'm like, that's my lane. I already had watched Eddie Murphy and the Lears. That's the only comedy, that's the only thing I knew about comedy. Grew up on those. So I start lying to people saying I was a comedian. And I remember one time I was flexing in my mama's house. I like I needed a job. And I don't mess around and end up a label for Brick Masons. Oh, that's the hardest oh, fucking job Jesus. you can get. Oh, Jesus. Who? I knew I was. Oh, Boy, that who? Job, that's some break, who? back breaking labor right yeah, there. They had that laying out driveway. My mama standing there like, y'all hiring? He like, yeah, we'll be able to get you at 6 in the morning. And they were not bullshitting man, they outside at 545. Up. Man, they picked me up. We go to a subdivision. It's no houses. It's just a street laid. They done cut out all the trees. So it's just, the sun just beaming. Hell yeah. And they building foundations yep. to houses. And I was the labor. So I'm in charge. They, they were doing the blocks. They were doing the blocks in the mud. Wheelbarrows and all that Man, this blocks in the mud. They, they, it would get, at first they were like, blocks, I come with the blocks. They'd be like, mud, I come with the wheelbarrow. They'd be like, blocks, I get the blocks. They'd be like, mud. Then they'd be like, blocks, mud. It would get slow and slow, blocks. Bro, and I got this wheelbarrow hours. full of mud. And, and then you know, heat on your ass? Man, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm 17, so I am probably I probably weigh about 110. Man, tearing your ass up so trying to I keep the bit with that barrel. Boom! <laughs> the mud all over the ground. Yep. So that's, I made, the, that's the worst day you could have. That was my first day. Probably the worst day. Oh, that was my first day. I went home, slept all the way to 6 in the morning. Yeah, damn oh, sure did. did. Slept all the way to 6 <laughs> in the morning. Got up, went back out there. Oh, shit. We're on a whole nother house. I probably made it to 10.30. Hey, out of there. That shit ain't no I was out of there. I started, I started hiving. I, I, I went, I, just, I was dehydrated. I had to go find a patio, one of them houses they had already built. In the house, they had to build a patio. I laid up under the patio at 5 o'clock when they got off. Damn. I got my check. It was $440 for a day and a half. Right, damn, yeah, I would have went, went back. back. I would have <laughs> went back. Yeah. I could. I'd have took me some Gatorade and some yeah. goddamn. Yeah. Man, no, you I can't, don't. man. You can't handle this. Shit, I did that shit since I was 14. Wow. Yeah, I and my stepdad had a brick lint. Him and his brother had a brick lint exactly. coming. You know, it was Nigga, it wasn't no quitting. <laughs> then he got to go home with these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Dude, they dude. fucked me up so bad one day, shot. We had brick bow. Had br I know it was like. Look, um, they was making these little like single family homes, right? Oh. Whole subdivision, like you said. You know, it'd be like a Willow Cottage or some shit yeah. where all these motherfuckers look exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we had to do the whole fucking subdivision one summer. So one day we had them worked all motherfucking day. We get finished with the house. I'm like, bro, we can finally go home. Nigga left that job, pulled up on another job, doing the motherfucking blocks. I was like, bro, this is motherfucking, this is unreal, mm -hmm. dog. Bro, when you get through with that Ain't fucking no job, fuck touching them bricks all day, especially if you don't have no glove. Yeah. Bro, you could take your fucking hand like this like, yeah. and rub your shirt. Yeah. All that shit coming yeah. spool yeah, You can go sand the car down. Yeah. Bring your hand and be raw like in the motherfucker. Sandpaper on these son of bitch. So, so I had that story right. Uh, more bricks, more mud. So I'm telling the people about my brick mason labor job. I catching random people. I'd never been on stage. I'm lying, saying I'm a comedian after I saw Def Comedy Jam. Then, one day, we ran down the street. He said, do you want to be a star? Come join the Zemers Light Comedy Are You Funny contest. I'm like, I looked at my pot of fleet. I said, I'm going. He said, shout out to them folks and throw apples at you, man. I said, man, I'm going. It was at Uptown. Well, earthquake on Uptown. The old, old, old Uptown. So I Nigga, it's about 18. four old uptowns yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah, I was about to add what's <laughs> going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was 18, so I got my partner paper. When they had paper license, I got my partner paper license. 
and I went, I went up as Marvin Smith. Marvin motherfucking Smith. I went up as Marvin Smith on a paper license. Ryan Cameron was hosting. And I done watched all the comedians, and they was talking about Lorena Bobby and all that type stuff. So, that's the lady that cut the man dick yeah, off and yeah. threw it outside. Yeah, a lot of left, people don't even forgot the reference at this yeah, point. Talk about uh, left, I burnt the house up. Damn. I had just come out of a traumatic relationship from my first girlfriend cheated on me. So I run it out here. I had on my silk polo, all the unbuttoned. I said, I want to talk about some pimp killers. And then I started going into my act. And they didn't boo me. But they got real quiet. Oh, shit. That the world. I think I scared them. Cause I had an intent. I'm straight out the trap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was crazy. But I didn't, they didn't boo me. And so I left. I ain't feeling the type of way them folks didn't know me. Yeah. I was 18 years old. Yeah. I had me a little spot bumping. So another then the next, I'm at the car wash on Camelton where I'm from on my block, get my coffee. I'm gonna get, get my car wash. I got them washing my car. And some girls pulled up. We like, what y'all doing tonight? Like, we going right there to Harlem Nights to the comedy night. It be packed in there. Looked at my fleet again. I said, I'm going. He said, shout, he ain't going in there. And then before folk were making it rain, I had a little spot on university. I went, I got me like a thousand ones. I put them in my pockets. I said, look, don't folk boo me or anything, I'm going to throw this money out. Pulled up, went, part, I had a 98. Uh, I had a flash, 98, had the rims on it, Vols. I pulled up in front of the club. It was smoke pot. I went and signed the list. I went up, it was everybody I went to school with, everybody I was on the block with. They started yelling my name, shout it, shout it. I started working my legs. <laughs> That's where the shouted dance came from. I done burnt After the that, goddamn light up. I went up every Tuesday for two years. Bruce Bruce was the host that night. Bruce Bruce took me on. I went up every Tuesday for two years. All the night switched to move to a location, 559, the hardest comedy spot. Ever. All tours that come through there, the comedians would call in because they didn't want to work that room. It was one of the hardest rooms ever. Yeah. And I used to go up every Tuesday and get to their ass. 559 five, five, West five, End. 559 in the West End. Yep. Damn. And it just, I think they just made <laughs> They it. just tore it down not too long ago, didn't they? Yeah, they had a visual, everything. That's where Hot Boys came. Baby showed up with beat with all of them when really? they were nobody. You know what I'm saying? 559 five, was one of the hypest clubs in Atlanta. And then I, I just... I, what made you stay with it? Stay with comedy? Yeah. Oh, the shit! <laughs> <laughs> After that had, second time. I never had a problem with being funny. Yeah. It was just learning the game, learning the skill. You know yeah. what I'm saying? How to do it like, on stage. Yeah, because like I was saying, I go up and say anything. Yeah. I used to beatbox. I used to beatbox, so I used to scratch. So I used to end my set with the Bernie song. I used to be like, uh, I say, I say... Yeah, I got cable, GCC, ghetto cable connection. I said, it ain't got the regular Bernie. I said, Bernie be up there with some headphones on, talking about, yep, yep, ah, yep, ah, yep, yep, I love you. They just go crazy. Do a whole mix. I do the whole Bernie mix and beatbox and everything. Get up out of there. Uh, so who was around when you started? You said Bruce and. Who was, who who was, was already around? Who was yeah, running the city? Who was, lit? who was running the city? Who was running around the city who had that motherfucker on fire with the comedy? Bruce, 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 and Quake. So I started, I maybe started, they had a legendary club called uh, The Comedy Act. I'm okay. sure you heard of The Comedy Act. Comedy Shout Act, out yeah. to Michael Williams. I missed The Comedy Act, but all the comedians used to go to The Comedy Act on Tuesday night and do open mic. So uh, Tuesday night open mic was a ritual in Atlanta. So when The Comedy Act closed, I think Bruce Bruce and Earthquake clashed. So Bruce went this way, Earthquake went this way. Earthquake got with Gary Abdul and opened the original Uptown Comedy Corner. Mm. So now Earthquake got him a club. And Bruce, oh, you know, he working his thing. So Bruce had his little band of comedians because he was getting people. So he had me, Small Fry, um, <clears throat> rest in peace to Tyler Craig, my, yeah. my, my partner, partner. You know what I mean? I Real live name, yeah. to Tyler Craig right now. Right. And the moral of the story is. Sure. And so. <laughs> Goddamn. You heard me? <laughs> <laughs> so, that nigga was so fucking yes, funny. Tyler helped me so much, man. He used to live on Camelton. He stayed on the block. Word. So if I'm in the trap and it's hot, I run out, show up at Tyler door. And he let me in. He be like, man, when you gonna come out that block, man? Come on side of that real shit and get serious with this comedy. He used to always give me these talks. And. Tyler taught me tech. He gave me tech. Like I was, I was, 
I didn't have it. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. To act right. You know what I'm saying? I, I had no rules. Yeah. And Tyler Craig always gave me these little pep talks. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna go here and whoop everybody. Hey, the end of whooping, what you gonna do? <laughs> no, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> you better shit your ass right there. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, gonna sit right there. Hit, hit this. Hit this with your bad nigga, ass. Hey, yo. <laughs> I don't give a fuck how mad you is. That nigga hit that lab. You ain't mad no more. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, you can smell. Fuck, you don't tell the tennis motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gonna tear the whole club up? I'm gonna have to spend my little, you mad here, spend my little right? show money to burn your ass out. <laughs> you know you need one of us ain't got no license. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then what the fuck we gonna do, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you know you wrong? So I, I live with Tyler Craig's spirit every day. Yeah, you man. You know. I miss my nigga every day, bro. Yes, yes him and my sister Dirty. How about that? When did you meet Dirty? Cause I, that's the one I knew you to be real man, tight. Dirty with. man. My cousin Squirt called me one time. Hey, shout out to Squirt, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, shout out. Shout out to out. Squirt. Yeah. That that hey, Squirt been through a lot, bro. Yes, and man. the way he been bouncing back and holding it. Yes, hey, yeah, yeah. I always, fuck I, with Squirt, I, bro. I, I took him on the road with me. I said, God put it on my heart. He said, man, take your cousin on the road with you, man. Yeah. And I called him. You know, you know his Facebook. Yeah, of course. And he was expressing himself through Facebook. And so one of the mornings, you know, I read his post and God said, man, this your, this your first cousin. You know, you got to be there. And so I called him. I said, cuz. I said, God told me to make you my opening act. So whatever shows I come on, I'm taking you. Man. He do, he do great on the road. He be so excited. He gets mine off of it. You know. But he pretty popular with the ladies. I know he lost his wife, but. He you most know. definitely. So he, but he one of them ones that you can take on the work. He ain't got to worry about them. Yeah. He going to have a good show. He going to yep, yep. have a good time. He going he he to do good. He ain't going to try to overstep me. He ain't going to try. I mean, but I don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, it's, it's, it was more of a personal thing because. I've been doing comedy so long, and my first cousin doing comedy, and there's no reason why I can't take him and get the bag, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially so he introduced point. you to Dirty. He introduced me to Dirty, so he called, he said, Cuz, he said, man, if these girl comedians just killed the comedy club, look, you like us. So I'm like, he's like, man, I'm gonna bring her to the house. And he, when, he, when he brought her to my house, I was looking at the woman with me. <laughs> we both about 110. We had gold teeth. She was way country. Yeah, Monroe George. Monroe, Monroe Georgia. 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 And we just, we just linked, man. Dirty was so special to me. I remember when I first got my first apartment. I started when I was eighteen. I'm eighteen. I got my first apartment. Tyler and Dirty, Dirt, Tyler and Dirty South can't stay with me. I just left. We just, we just, we was like the Rat Pack. We just go do our shows. We write jokes all night. You know what I'm saying? And it was, it, was, it, was my, it was my best friends, man. Yeah. Like, I feel like when, when they both died, man, it just, part of me went with them, but I still live with their spirit. I got their South ashes. I started bringing them with me. I started bringing them with me. But I, I take them to my shows. I take them uh, a lot of places. And she's sitting on my fireplace right there. We talk to her. That's, that's hard. Yeah. I went to Dirty House one time. It was a wild story, bro. I ain't, but one thing that I know I learned about her that day while I was at her house, that's how this you know the story crazy, bro. Shut shut <laughs> we, we go over there, you know how she y'all come to the house, let uh, eat some grandma. write some joke with grandma. Mm, love y'all. Bruh, we over there, right? You know, she she love to fuck with people. I did, and I'm young in the game. Man, I mean, Clayton hadn't been doing comedy probably a year, bro. Man, dirty go in the back and come out with a goddamn dildo about oh. this goddamn long, long purple oh, dildo. Yeah. Dick on this side and dick on this side. Then put a handful of goddamn that shit right there and say, mm. "What y'all want to do?" Man, I left that motherfucker so fast. Oh man, bro. But dirty dude. used to read the Bible every day. Yeah, and she write. She used to write in the Bible. Dirty one of the funniest. She wrote her jokes in the Bible, bro. She one of the funniest women comedian ever Grace State. She would get a standing ovation in five minutes. In five bro. minutes. Five it, minutes. Two. She get two of them. If you just watch the way that she operate that stage, bro, a, a voice control. Mm -hmm. She can hold the microphone way the fuck over here. Way over there, yep. And yeah. it sounds like she got, it's just, she was so technically funny before she even got to end of her work. She let you know exactly who she was yep. first thing out of her mouth. You can tell, dirt a goddamn go on that stage and look one motherfucker in the eye the whole goddamn time, man. It can be a thousand motherfuckers. Oh, boy. That's all she needs. That's what they taught us. One they say motherfucker. You catch that, 
Because that one person you make eye contact, even if the crowd around you, you know what I'm saying, fluttering, you catch that one person you make eye contact, and you got them. You engage with them, and you do your show for them. And, uh, and you know, if they just, if the crowd too too loud, bring your voice down a little bit so they have to quiet down. So they can see, like, we can see the practice stuff. Like, the art of comedy. Yeah, she, being, she had all that crowd yeah, control. Down, She'll start crying on you and be faking yeah. her ass off. Yeah. Boy. I said dirty bitch <laughs> with a nigga one night, and then out of nowhere, she just said, "Nigga, fuck you! Your mama left me," and went right back. To, man, dirty was. A I just seen dirty pull the motherfucking paint off the wall. Let me tell y'all something. What's his name? Uh, out of Washington, uh, T Terry Co Teddy Carpenter. Oh, okay. Teddy DC. Carpenter, right? So it has uh, in St. Louis had a spot called the Ambassador. Bruce Bruce started taking me up there. It's seventeen hundred every Friday, first Friday. 1700, 2000, mm -hmm. every Friday, first Friday. So it built my name in St. Louis before I was even on television because I'm performing for these big crowds. So I brought this over. So one show, I talked the promoter into bringing Dirty. Oh, shit. Dirty, she brought. Dirty get standing ovation in five minutes. Two standing ovations. I mean, it's uncontrollable. She just go and tear them up so hard real fast. And she'll get off stage and she ain't getting no money back. We've been in situations. Oh, yeah. We've been in situations. <laughs> and she keep that razor blade on my, but let me tell you this though. So, so she done came to St. Louis before. And I've been coming with Bruce. And we ripping so hard. The funny first service is that fell off with Michael Carrier. They didn't fall off. They stopped with Michael Carrier because of the promoter. Then they brought him back with Teddy Carpenter. And they had shouted in Dirty South. Brain come back, sold out, all the way sold out. The first show, so we get we get to the Marriott by the airport at us uh, in St. Louis. Daddy called me. She said, "Shout it, you know these folk credit card on the room." She, I'm in the gift shop right now. I got me some rings. I got fifty rings <laughs> for the show. I'm like, "Dirty, you cannot charge that." that stuff. She said, "You don't want no steak." I'm like, "Man." So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want him. Yeah, she sent it to my room. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't playing. She said, Shout it, he put, shout it. We the star, we packed that place out tonight. So, this already her attitude. This already her, what she on. She been like that anyway. Yeah, that's her. So, next thing you know, we a uh, the limo pull up. It went everybody still in limo, right? So, we get in the limo, dirty. Turn that drama up. Left, left, right, left, get on up. We just wear camouflage, like, right, right, left, left. We in there jamming. They're like, mm, she get hyped up. That day, you know, we still in front of the hotel. The limo door open. It's Teddy Carpenter. He got on his black silk, his dress shoes and everything. So Dirty Sal, like, oh, you want, you in there with her? Oh, come on. She slides to the side. He get to the top of the limo. That day, you know, he, she turned me, like, left, left. Teddy Carpenter like, baby girl, you got to turn that music off. This is my limo. That's what I say. Fuck you talking about, nigga. I'm the motherfucking star. <laughs> and my brother packed this bitch out tonight. They just brought your bitch ass. I don't know why they brought your bitch ass, but we were here last time. She went into all that. You're like, baby girl. So they act like, they like this. We in the back of the limo headed to the goddamn thing. I'm seeing her like, oh, <laughs> thing. I'm like, ain't nobody finna touch her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, ain't nobody finna touch her. He like, she, she like, nigga, I'll kill you. Boy, I, boy. Took it out. <laughs> Took that thing out. Boy, I cut your ass. She got, she, boy, and he like, baby girl, you, he, he cocky now. Yeah. He cocky as fuck. And so they had each other. So the limo driver done called ahead to the ambassador, and they got security, everything waiting when we pull up in the limo. So I come out the limo first. I'm like, man, I see all the police and everything. They're right when we pull up, they're like, nigga, I cut your motherfucker. You crazy fucking with me? God damn it. They open that door there and say, why you want to fuck with a lady? <laughs> 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 yeah, you want to fuck with a lady? Put her goddamn yeah, dirty, boy. She cried, tell the cop in the cat. He get out. Bitch, I'll kill you. Oh, hell no. I'm like, wow. Rest yeah. in peace, dirty Rest south. Rest in peace, dirty south, man. Yeah. That's crazy. You want yeah. It? Yeah, that, that one right here. That's cold over. Yeah, that's cold. Yeah. Man. Man. Time's in this comedy game, bro. Yeah. yeah. So then, yo, Bruce talking about how I got started. But yeah, I just came up on the Bruce, and Bruce kept me on the road with him. Like, yeah. the, only, the only comedian ever took me on tour kept it G. Like, because I was, I was, I was, I, 
I started off, I told you I never had a problem with being funny. It was just learning. Then Bruce put me in front of these big crowds just before. You know what time Civic it is. Center Theater. Yeah. San Diego. We coming through there. Diego Sand. No cap. Diego Sand. I'm going. Cross yeah, we're going to be out there. I'm June Cross 22nd. Hey, if y'all looking for me June 22nd, Where you going? I'll be in San Diego. San Diego. We're going to come with you. Get your tickets. 85 South Show .com. Get your tickets. June 22nd. San Diego. San Diego. Cross uh, the line. Civic Center Theater. Cross yep. the line. Look, I already wrote the song for you. And I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to tell you the words. BlueChew.com. Go get you some. If you want to make love to your lady for a long, long time, that's up to you. So look, this is one of the hottest summers so far already. And if you want to keep it hot in the bedroom, you need to go holler at the good folks over there at BlueChew. They can definitely help get you right. Giving you the confidence that you need all summer long. The process is so easy. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you approve, you'll get your prescription within days. One of the best things about it, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. That's right. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Just chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code 85SOUTH at checkout. Just pay for the $5 shipping. It's BlueChew.com, promo code 85SOUTH to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller here with Prize Picks, where a single entry could be life changing. While the NBA season may be over, there's still plenty of things to place an entry on, like Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and the WNBA. Here's the deal it's just super easy. Just register, make a deposit, and select more or less two to six player stats, such as points, assists, pitcher strikeouts, and rebounds, and you could potentially win up to 25 times your entry. For first time users, prize picks will match your initial deposit up to $100. Available in 30 states. Head to prize picks now and use promo code 85SOUTH to let them know we sent you. Don't wait. Download prize picks today for your daily fantasy sports experience. Daily fantasy made easy. Oh, this one comic view popping. Yeah. So it's, it's the comic view, it's selective now. You know what I'm saying? Like Bruce Bruce, Chocolate, they making people stars. Right, 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 right. right. This at the height of stars. Cheryl Underwood hosting. So Cheryl Underwood orchestrated a protest because they was only paying like $150, $200 or something like that. Paying the host or no, the, the comedian. The comedian. Oh, you gotta fly yourself One to time. Oof. One time payment. Put yourself up. Yeah, put yourself up in everything. They gonna spend that shit however long they want. They gonna spend They spending it now. Yeah. What? <laughs> so then, so Cheryl put on protests. Like, all the big comedians, all the people who got names and stuff, they wasn't doing comedy for all the L.A. comedians. But it's a million, 50 comedians in Atlanta funny as hell. Right. We just been brewing. I'm about five years in now. We still got Lay Love, we got Double D, we got everybody, like, like, Shit, wait, everybody. Food stamp wait. did that yeah. shit. Yeah. So, and then, then, so. Smoke from Macon. BT. That what, that what got made me mad, though. Cause Smoke did it the year before I did, Jesus. You all right? You know, you ain't got no party till you drop some breaks on. <laughs> but, uh. Um, Give me some time, Jeff. Smoke made me mad. I mean, I ain't, I ain't saying Smoke made me mad. But I, I had been doing comedy and I was on the road. You know, I'm gaining fans. And at the same time, the year I made Come View, it, they was letting interns accept the tapes. So mm. if you get your tape in first, they're like, ooh, he funny. Ooh, he funny. And they don't mess around games of comedians that ain't got five minutes or only got five minutes. A spot. A only. spot. Yeah. And they go up and rip for five minutes. Now these comedians getting booked. Yeah. And ain't got goddamn feature time. It ain't got time. Yeah. And so uh, Dirty South got in touch with the people at BET. That's, she got me on coming View. Yeah. Dirty South got me on coming View. She sent her tape in Al from uh, Macon, helped Dirty South get on. And when Dirty South finally talked to him, she said, yeah, she said, I'm coming. Y'all got me? She said, yeah. She said, let me tell y'all about my bro. So she gave me the number. When I called, I said, I'm Dirty South brother. They said, great, we want you on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was hitting that hard. <laughs> I ain't never seen no tape. Oh, no, that dope. And Lester Berry was the host. And uh, I was still with Bruce. And because Bruce, I went on, I was on tour with Bruce all the way up. He got me on television. 
Once I got on television. Shout out to Bruce Bruce. Yeah, Shout boom. He said, you got your wings, man. You good. I went up, gripped it, paid, paid all that money to go to L.A. Doing the protest. Crossed the protest lines. As a young comedian, you know, you can't tell no comedian they ain't finna be on TV. I would, yeah. Like, I crossed oh. the protest lines. All of us did. All yeah. the comedians. And then the week, the week after I went to L.A. and spent all my money to be on Comedy View, they transferred to Atlanta. Damn. Damn. You should have just waited. Yeah, but then you you I already had a relationship, so I started doing warm-ups. I was uh -huh. a warm-up guy. When they Nigga. got to Atlanta. When they came but to Atlanta. You just made me think about how many niggas from Atlanta like that was around when I started doing comedy that did Comic View. Nigga, Sherman Golden, Last yes. Love, yeah. uh, Big Sean, Nesto. Mm -hmm. Mother but that's how everybody got you, on there. Dirty South, Zoo, yeah. Tyler Craig, uh, Food Stamp. Yep. Goddamn. If you was funny. Uh, um, who else? Yeah. It was one, it's one more that I'm leaving now. <laughs> Shit. Uh, Ron G was on New Faces. LeVar did the New Faces. Yeah. Um, it exposed Atlanta. And once they find out. Double D. Was Ronnie they, already? Ronnie already? Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, Ronnie Jordan, he he got he made his come up really doing like that Kings of Comedy yeah. shit when he won that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ronnie Jordan, he been. I remember that. Man, that's one of the most slept on niggas out. Shit, K Dub. You can't leave K Dub. Yeah, K -Dub. Daryl Dam ended up Bunny. doing that fucking uh, yeah. comic view. So the whole city pretty much ran through that motherfucker when he came here. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. Tim say, Murray. I don't say too many comedians. And I don't even judge comedians by being funny because comedy is an art. It's what you bring. Yeah. It's what you bring and how people interpret you. Um, because I, I used to think it was all about ripping, but now I tell my story. I tell my life. I bring yeah. people to me. And it's, that's two different comedians. Yeah. I mean, it's a comic. It's a difference between a comic and a comedian. But this guy right here. Oh, yeah. They can't take nothing from Carlos on the stage, dog. Yeah. Nothing. In real life. In Where real guy. <laughs> Period. Period. Yeah. Can't tell you nothing from Carlos. Man, Period. I remember when Shawty got his night at the new Uptown. That man, like, once he got to, like, you know, it usually take about six weeks. Maybe on the street. Yeah. yeah. Like, it usually take a month. Like, we, you know, as comedians, if we go get a new spot, we be like, shit, six weeks. That's, that's the target. Shawty had that motherfucker full. Whole goddamn West Side, Southwest, all the strip of drug dealers. These oh, are the it, motherfuckers who can't. But it's, it's totally different from Sunday with that Nari guy. Shawty got a whole different crowd. Ooh. I'm talking about these, all, all the rappers coming, all the motorcycle riders coming, the skateboard niggas coming, the hoes coming, the, the dope boys coming, like the whole West Side coming. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Every Monday. So Nard had mostly like East Side Kirkwood crowd. Mm -hmm. So and these, so it's like, so if you come, so, the, so right. Yeah. Like I'm a hood base. What night you had at first? Tuesday. You had Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday night was classic open mic. Bruh. You know, in it, it then he gonna have some some rap niggas gonna perform. Yep. So it's like they coming for the show, but this nigga, this 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 one of them nights. Right. Man, used to go up in that motherfucker and yep. get down. Yes. Yeah. So was it before the music videos? Or no, this after. This, this like yeah, this this, 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 this 05, 06. Yeah. So we gotta go back to this, how the music video popped oh, off. Well, I, I okay. got you know so, I, I, I got one. I need okay. To so I ain't on no TV. I'm on tour with Bruce. I'm getting fans because I'm performing with these big crowds in these big arenas with Bruce. You know what I'm saying? So then I get on Comment View. But I'm going to tell you one thing that helped me and, keep, and, and one thing that I, before I even knew about branding, when I started waving my legs and they started yelling, shouting, and then I used to be like, let me hear you say, you know what I'm saying? They say, shout it. Yeah. I'm going to tell you one that really put you on, like, in my city. When you did the Comment View with the motherfucking like. Yeah. You he first had brought out and I put your hand up. Break, your, break wrist your wrist and, and put, put it on, on your chest. chest. <laughs> Bro, that shit right there, that's what yeah. really I feel like spreads you all through the whole south. Yeah. 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 Cause yeah. I remember that, cause my, my yard came home like, bro, you gotta see this shit. This <laughs> nigga was so good. I remember that shit. And I was I was raw, like I I was just being shouted, you know what I'm saying? My interpretation. Right. Because uh it wasn't like trap comedy or like it wasn't no Really hood comedians. Everybody was coming from up under the Frank Sinatra era, but you know, ploys and dressing up and stuff. Then Def Comedy Jam broke it out and yeah. loosened it up. You know what I'm saying? See, like you said, it was more like everybody from the projects we came up kind of broke shit. Yeah. But then it's like, 
like you said, the, the trap era was a different, this is a different genre of comedy. It's more hip hop. It was faster pace. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Yes, yes, faster pace. Uh, we do a lot. We did a lot of sex jokes. Right. We did a lot. Of sex but it was jokes. more on the. That's on the verbal side, but it was more of a performance type. You yeah. Give, you, like people re used to fuck. Like now, it's all about jokes. But people used to actually give a fuck about the presentation, like how it look on stage. Yes. Because you ain't got to be present. the funniest nigga to have a good ass show. Right. And that's usually how it be. It, it, the niggas who don't necessarily have the best jokes be that they know how to visualize the motherfuckers, though. That's why some of this shit you see going viral, it ain't that it's just hilarious. It's, it's hilarious. just, it's so descriptive. It's visual. The nigga performed it. That's what really sells the joke. It's the yeah. performance of the shit. It is. It is. You have to say, you have to say. Like I said, that nigga had the whole motion in, like, once he did the shit two or three times, the whole crowd doing this shit on TV. So what the fuck you think what people gonna do if they watching this shit? It's just... Having that little vice like that. When, when yeah. Ricky Smiley came out with the, the Lil Daryl, he ain't just do a Lil Daryl joke. That nigga literally became Lil Daryl. Yeah. And yeah. I, nigga, you know how I forgot too? I was going to ask you about my other partner that passed, Big Rome. Man, Big Rome, he was there that night, the first night I went. Man, home. that's one of the funniest mm -hmm. niggas yes. in the world, bro. Big Rome was Quake's opener. Word. And Quake fit in. What? So. Man. Quake wouldn't get to the club. You know Quake ain't getting to the club on time. He, he never was on time. So that's Rome that's would host, what he known for. Rome would host until Quake got there. Okay. And Rome was a monster. Rome was a monster. I remember one time, this all right, so I so at one point I started winning all the contests. Every every liquor sponsor contest, I was winning them. I won the Def Comedy Jam, New Jack. I won New Jack of the Year, Comedy Awards. I won uh uh, I want one on one on one comedy tour. This is when I met Cat Williams on this contest. Yeah, when I met Cat, <clears throat> uh, it was funny because I beat. I I made it all the way to the finals. So we started off with the preliminary rounds. Oh look, it used to be a lot of money in the comedy competition. Yeah, well, you they win like five thousand dollars. No, because the liquor sponsors. The Miller Light shit was Miller like Light. twenty five, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the Miller. Well, so. I was in the Zemers. But well, that was the last I, one, though. But yeah, and once you get to the rounds, yeah, yeah, because I think my well, well, this 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 uh, it was a uh, I can't remember exactly which beer company it was, but first round, it's thirty comedians from Atlanta going up the same night. Dang. Boom, I, thick, packed, everybody ripping. Where they doing is it? At Uptown. Okay. At old Uptown, big wrong. Went up. And did my joke. No, man. <laughs> not my partner. You remember Lowe, what you Not my what? partner. <laughs> Lowe, they were laughing so hard. They could not hear me say, that's my <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do from now? I grabbed the chill. Hell no. Ooh. Bruce, stop me. Say, y'all, don't do it, y'all. Don't do it. You finna throw it. Man, that's my joke, man. That's my joke. That's my joke. That's my joke. I'm running around. Them. He came out stage. All right, man, you know you did my joke. He like, y'all. And so I calmed down. I went to Denise Howard. I said, Denise, he did my joke. I said, it ain't fair. He ripped. He ripped harder than I did. He ripped harder than I did. And Wonder Rip. Wonder Smith. Big Rome got eliminated. And me and Wanda Smith advanced to the finals. Me, Wanda Smith, and Tyler Craig advanced to the finals. Then they had everybody from every region come. So for, for him, stealing your joke got him eliminated? Yes. Because oh, I, I wanted yes. like you said he real. Yes. Okay, so yes. it was he, he known it that this was your shit. It was, yeah, it was known. It was the weed joke, the past weed. You ever, yourself. Had, you ever had some weed so good, you smoking it by yourself? And you knew when nobody there and you just like... That one. That one. Yeah. And he did it better than I did. So I started doing it like he did it. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> what? Yo, yo. If somebody steal your joke and do it better than you, you take what they put to it. Okay. What? Uh, what? It was yours. It was mine. <laughs> I thought you just steal the original part back. No, you, what? What you gonna let this sauce for? Just take you just your shit back. It, take it back, yeah, but I, I'm not finna do it. If I know that it goes better like this, cause you started this. Mm -hmm. I ain't mess with your jokes. You came in my barrel sampling me. <laughs> and it wasn't even no sample. You don't get no joke. Word for word. Your ass weed so good. You pass it to somebody else. He passed that weed. I could see when he was passing it to the L. The crowd was like, ah, ah, ah. 
I'm like, that nigga big wrong. They, but yeah, we so the next one was at the Roxy Theater, and DL Hughley was the host, and me and DL slick cousins, you know my name Young Hughley, and so he like, and I had already did the research, but the comedy awards when I won best new jack comedian was the night before that that second round of the competition, mm. and so he's like you a Hughley. He like, your people got an art museum in um, Stone Mountain? I'm like, yeah. He like, cuz. So then I won Best New Jack Comedian of the year. And he like, I knew you was a Hughley. So the next day, I done got my, I done got my mama boyfriend suit, his uh-huh. white John Lennon suit. I got my, my uh, long flap, uh, black shirt. Man, I was working at NTW, changing tires. I had the whole tie shop. I had all my supporters from Atlanta, and it was to advance to the finals to compete in Chicago. And I went out there and did the shawty man. I went out there and did my thing so hard, it was no thought of who the winner was. Dia came back, he was like, mm. I went out there. I advanced and one day advance. One day advance, and that night was surreal. And I think the chick that was with me, that was supporting me all that time, I think she left with DL that night. But stop, <laughs> stop, man. Don't say oh, that. Don't man. say that, man. Man, yeah. she did, man. <laughs> they, they took me to, they took me to, at 112. They took me to 112 celebrating. And with DL, managers him and everything. Everybody else wasn't there, though. She wasn't there. He, but when I come out stage, she done made her way backstage. She supposed to be in the front. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you remember about it. No, no, I Damn. won though. I said, but that was, yeah, man. That then shit she is She's sick. She going home. I just won the contest. I bet you will. But, woo, woo, woo. Um, I advanced to the finals. When I, got, when I got to Chicago, I really think they put a heckler on me. <laughs> I do. But I made a rookie mistake because I'm going to Chicago. Now, I'm getting a little motion down here. I got, dang, I had started wearing that little uh, pimp looking stuff like the Versace uh, print. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? With the line. I, had, I remember I had a line green blazer. I paid about $700 for that blazer. Hell no. Versace vest, the white. Because I had one my mama, boyfriend, John Lennon, suit in the other one. But yeah. now, I done started making some money. Because that when Bruce, Bruce done called me after I won that round when I beat everybody in the Southeast region in Dimples. That was his manager. She was like, we, we noticed you're doing some things. We want, to, we want you to come work with us. We want to take you on tour. Don't tell nobody in Atlanta. And so I used to curl up in the car in, in the Mustang like a little kid. I was about 20 years old, 19, in the back of Bruce Bruce Film car. We used to go on the road every weekend. I got paid $500 a show. So I was buying some threads. Yeah. And when I got to Chicago, <clears throat> and so who all made it to the finals? Check this. It was 10 of us. It was me. And Wanda Smith from the South, Cat Williams, who at then that time was Cat in the Hat, um, uh, um, D. Ray Davis. Shout out to D. Ray, man. Shout out to D. Ray, Corey Holcomb. <laughs> Shout out to Corey. Um, uh, Craig, Craig Davis. Yeah, Craig. Oh, Craig Robinson. Craig Robinson. Shout out to Craig Thank Robinson. Craig Robinson. They got the craziest Craig Robinson yeah, story. Yeah, Craig there. Robinson. Uh, Mike Epps. Yeah, shout out Mike to Mike. Mike Epps. And this is a hard-ass competition. Yeah. Well, I'm just yeah. listening to him. Yeah. Uh, it's probably one more in there. It got to be. I know it's one more sleeper. It always be one think, nigga that get left off. Man. It was a guy from St. Louis, Reggie Ridge, a police officer. Oh, man. He got locked up. Reggie Ridge? Yeah, he went to jail. He might have got out. Not the one to do the, the voices and the impressions. No, not him. No, okay, no, another no. Reggie Reggie. I was like, and um, hey, that nigga ain't no police. That nigga nation is <laughs> long. But, but uh, it was great competition. I walked out there with all that lime green. I had them old fake snake skin shoes on. I Hell no, nah. bro. Mm. Yeah, man, in Chicago, on they the let you stage have it. at the Regal Theater. We got about three thousand people. Ooh. And I got, out, I got, out, I started doing my thing. I called a heckler from all the way at the top, like, you ain't no pimp. Nigga, you ain't no pimp. And then that's crazy how you sound just like the nigga. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you remember that shit? I remember that. That shit, yeah, boy. I remember that. 
Then I used to do the, I used to end my I used to talk about the Soul Train line. And then at the end of the Soul Train, I do New York. I I used to dive up in the air, way up in the air, and die and spin around like. And then I did a different type of people. And then I'd be like, they ain't never put nobody on Soul Train from the South. Because they did. We would rock like this, then the booty shake come up, don't stop. And I start dancing like that, get the crowd real hype. This was a known joke I closed with. One of the Smith went up in front of me and said, y'all know I'm from Miami. Before I get out of here, I got to get all the way lit. Don't stop, get it. I say, this bitch. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, so who won? Third place, Corey Holcomb. Second place, Craig Robinson. First place, Mike Epps. Promote him. Bob something. <laughs> shout keep, out to Bob. Hey, shout man. out to Uncle Bob. Hey. Okay, and so, uh, Mike was so cool though. Mike like, yeah, man. So they, they, so now you a loser in the big contest. The liquor sponsor, they, they on the winner. Yeah. So they finna take Mike. They gave me the big check and everything. So I'm like, dang, Mike. I miss them days. I ain't got no weed. I ain't got no nothing. He like, shouty man, take my motherfucking hotel key. Go in my room. Get the weed right there. And smoke that shit. I'm going to go out here with these motherfuckers and do what they want me to do. And stop that bitch from crying. <laughs> <laughs> but no, one of my school, this is my sister. I'm just, I'm just recalling the facts. Yeah. yeah. Like I was, I, I, I love Wonder. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But she was crying that night. <laughs> but uh, and that how they, and Cat, Cat Williams, he wasn't pissed. You know what I'm saying? Me and him, that's, that was that's when we met, and so that was cool. Uh, I just think I know y'all on tour, Mike. Yeah, we and, just finished the tour. I think I scared. I think I scared Mike one time. Uh, in Atlanta. Cause then, you know, he was fucking with me. Yeah. He was fucking with me. And he had uh came to Atlanta, he brought his six four. And I'm still raw, raw talent, you know. They they screaming shouted. He brought his six four. They riding around in the six four looking like LA. It's more clean. I'm to my drip to the T clean. So he pull up to uptown, all us standing out there. So he like, hey, he like, what's up, shouty man? Let's 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 kick it, man. Let's go to 112. I'm like, hell yeah. I jump in the car with him. We ran, so we pull up to the light on Peace Street. Some guys were like, Day Day! They're like, Day Day! They're like, boy, we got them choppers. They pull up sticks. They're like, we got them choppers, we got all that. And Mike always goes to the hood and everything, but I think they kind of shook him a little bit. He like, he like, they ran with that, man. I'm like, man, Mike. You scared? I'm like, look, I got mine on me, man. Hell no. <laughs> My life shot, I think we need to take you back to Uptown. <laughs> yeah. I, said, I can put it in the woods. <laughs> I ain't had no tech. You know, God kept his hands on me, though. Yeah. But I ain't had no tech. But, you know, hey, I, I had to be protected. I'm out here in this city. You know I mean? You got to. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, welcome back to the 85 South Shout Show. Hi. We in this bitch. Shout out, shout out. Shout out what my name is. Yeah. Come the game, man. Yes, sir. Nigga been out here, bro. Yeah, right. <laughs> all over the place. So you know what I want to know. Go ahead. I didn't heard all the rest of it. I want to know how did this tip drill video come about? How you get in this? First of all, where y'all had it? Because so is is let the world know where where the video was because right. there's so many speculation. They just naming. They they say it was at Mike Vic House. They say it was at Usher House. They don't say it. so many Atlanta people have just given it. Shout out, you part of one of the most infamous videos. This video of me, hands in down. hits the very best. I love it. This video, hands down. Oh, man. Tip drill. I stumbled upon that video. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's some good story music. You can tell your story over Oh, there. yeah. Okay, so I was doing videos. I'm, I'm, I'm video. Shouting, you right. know what I'm saying? Doing all the music videos. So Bone Crusher and Baby D was doing a video the day before Tip Drill. And so I used to go to all the videos, get drunk, talk, talk, talk shit, and be in the videos, you know, good day work. So we all, we was at that video. We out on the front and all the directors, they got to direct the chair and stuff. So it was a guy who I didn't know 
was sitting in the director chair, and he was just sitting there. And so I go over there, and I start going in on him. <laughs> talking about how he look like LL Cool J. And the whole set is laughing. And so he called, he said, boy, you pretty funny. He said, I got something for you, man. Nelly joint. Hey, uh, he go my number. It's tomorrow. So I'm already cast it for CeeLo and Goody Mob Call Me video. I mean, you know, CeeLo and uh, Timberland. Mm-hmm. Call me if you want me to call. It was in Griffin, Georgia. Mm-hmm. So it was a shuttle. I had to catch the shuttle to Griffin. So I had done got bent that night. I was bent. You know what I'm saying? I mean, probably, we probably went to the club after the video. I wake up late. I don't miss the shuttle. Like, oh, man. So I'm like, let me see what this, uh, Nelly. let me see what this Nelly joint talking about. Yeah. So I call him. He like, yeah, come to Sugarloaf. It's going to be a shuttle. I get a Sugarloaf. I get on the shuttle. When I get on the shuttle, White chocolate on the shuttle with me. I don't know what I'm going to. The white chocolate is. <laughs> white chocolate was the street. Yeah, I know. I just want you to elaborate. The white chocolate, she was the, she was the bang. She was her. She had, she was the bang. Like, you go to the gentleman's club, she was the premier. And so, uh, Nelly them got there at the same time I did. So when you see Nelly them walk up in the front yard and you see them look and all them girls in the turnstile, that's almost an actual shot. Because then we walked there, we was like, uh oh. And they, 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 when you see all the shots with all the girls uh, by themselves getting in and out the pool and stuff, that was B-roll. They were shooting all of that because everybody was late getting there, so we all got there at the same time. So they were shooting all that B-roll. So That was uh, a great idea. Yeah. Marvelous. I said, so what you want me to do? I said, what you want me to do? And so the guy who I was joining, who told me to call him, ended up being Benny Boom. Damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah, so Benny Boom, so he gave me this camera. He took me to the side. He was like, look, man, you can do whatever you want to do. You can walk through whatever scene. You can do whatever you want. You just take this camera. Be you. And, yep. And I say, bet. He took me on the side of the house. He said, I need you to do an intro. And that's when I said, look, if you under indictment, marriage, <laughs> anything like that, this ain't for you. I'm coming in with the cameras. Hi! And man, when we came back up that hill, man, them girls got to work in. And I, you know, I was working. I was working. I'm working the camera. <laughs> I'm working the camera. I'm going up. I seen the little, the girls who weren't going, you know, weren't the stars of the video. You ain't see me go over there. I'm yeah. like, y'all get up for the butterheads. I'm yeah. doing my shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, that's when the butter, that's how the butterheads came about. That's how the butterhead joke. And I said, y'all get up for the butterheads. I said, y'all know what butterheads is? Because they started clapping. Yeah. I said, y'all know what butterheads is? And I dropped that joke on them. Then I slit made white chocolate famous because I did the weed joke, passed the weed, went wrong, I did it in now. And so I already knew white chocolate from the gentleman's club. I used to be in there with my hot $10 and trying to get her to bust it open. She'd be like, $10? Hey, man, I was young. I was young. And so, um, I, so I felt comfortable with white chocolate. We had already been on the shuttle. So I started... I had a conversation with her, and we just messed around. That was like at craft services, right? On stage. I said, I had a robe on. It was, oh, and I did a joke about, can I, if, if your right leg was Christmas and your left leg was New Year's, can I visit you between the holidays? <laughs> that went platinum. Yeah. That went platinum. Then at the end, we had them got so bent. That's when I did the weed joke. I gave the camera to Ray Buchanan. That's who house it was, Big Play Ray. I gave it, I gave it to, I gave the camera to his wife. I'm like, get me. I'm like, your ass weed so good. I'm performing for the camera at this point. Him and his old lady with that. Him, his old lady in whole Magic City. So if you look at them girls, that's uh Sugar. I don't know if they got her in BMF. <laughs> but all them, all this, this, all them BMF product girls, they all got Porsche whips and everything outside. Like I, I was in Jeezy's first video with Big Meach. Yeah. You know what I'm I had personal conversations with Big Meach. I used to be in the clubs, and then they go to locking the doors. Boom, boom, they start coming out with money everywhere. You can't see no carpet, no flow, just all money. <coughs> I'm like, man. And I, uh, uh and so, uh, yeah, I, that, that tip drill, I still didn't recognize what was going on. So well, how long after y'all did the video did you see it? And man, you saw by, what the fuck it was? I see, I see, we little dude called me like, shouting. You ain't seen BT Uncut. <laughs> I'm like, hell no. 
He like, you need to see that shit, nigga. You all over that motherfucker. Man, I turned that tip drill on. I knew that was a game changer. After that, I just all the video, I had all the video work. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was. Because you couldn't turn on the video back, back then. then without seeing yeah. your ass running through doing some yeah, crazy I, shit. I would turn on 106 in part and I would be on five of the videos. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You never ever, I was a teacher and never ever. Hey, 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 nigga on mamas, nigga. You what? know what time it is, nigga. Get your tickets, nigga. We coming to the town, nigga. Yeah, June 23rd, nigga. Yeah, you hella weird, nigga. You hella weird, June nigga. June 23rd, nigga. Nigga, if you don't come, to the, nigga. Show, nigga. Nigga, you don't mamas, come nigga. to the show June 23rd, nigga, you hella boosy. That's hella my boosy, favorite nigga. word. Hella what? boosy, nigga. Eh, eh. Get up out of here on the nigga, nigga. Get up out of here and come see you on June 23rd. Sure. Yes. You yeah, dig? Cause, yeah, cause, I'm, cause real G's eat cheese and stack G's. You dig? Not the ones that got down. They can't eat cheese. They lactose. They hella weird. No but get your tickets. Yeah. When, yeah, you, you don't already get, know. You don't get no hoes, so you lactose. Open in the ring. You, you lack hoes. You dig? Lactose? Lack. Lactose, 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 lactose. 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 You lack hoes, you lack hoes. You lack hoes and toes. And if you ain't got no friends, you lack bros. Right. Fact. You lack bros But you lack the toes, cause you need the hoes with the toes. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's, toes, that's the, yeah, you don't get no necessary hoes. with the hoes. You gotta, you gotta. With the toes. Unless you in a wheelchair. Formality. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you got toes, they just. Then she can roll up on you. Ah. June 23rd, we in the bay. Oklahoma, look here. This is a little different because I'm going to spend a little time with y'all. I'm going to be in Oklahoma City and I'm going to be in Tulsa back to back. On the 26th, I'm going to be in Oklahoma City and on the 27th, I'm going to be in Tulsa. Both nights, I'm going to be at Bricktown Comedy. So look here, it, that should not be hard to remember. I don't know how far or how close y'all are apart, but look here, I'm going to be in both of y'all. Oklahoma City on the 26th and Tulsa on the 27th. Both nights at Bricktown. Yes, I will be doing my 600 pound life. It's the last time I'm going to do it. So go ahead and get them tickets now. Bricktown Comedy, the 26th at Oklahoma City, Bricktown Comedy, 27th at Tulsa. Get those tickets. They don't sell now. Yo, Tampa, Florida, I will be back June 23rd. And yes, I will be doing 600 pound life. And this is the last time I'm going to do it. And I think I did it last time. So look, y'all might want to put a new episode in the comments. Uh, anyway, I'll look. That's besides the point. But look, just know I'm coming back Tampa, Florida at the Funny Bone on June 23rd. Tickets on sale now. Link in the bio, uh, comments, whatever. Just know the tickets on sale, and I'll be back June twenty third at the Funny Ball, Tampa, Florida. And so, I start. So I start really keying in on what I was doing. In some videos, I wasn't able to talk, so I would use my body language yeah. to speak through the yeah. camera. And I start just creating this. I wasn't creating no wild character. I was being myself yeah. and having fun. And that's what it was all about, like crunk era. Trout era, like, it was, I was having fun. Lil John then was making that music, and we was all a family. Everybody was getting money together. It wasn't in hating. Yeah. You grew up with Lil John, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, me and Lil John rode skateboards. Okay. As kids, Lil John. They can really skateboard. He was too, rich bro. kids. Yeah, I skateboard. I still, I, 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 I keep a skateboard. I, I'm in my wife's car, but every one of my vehicles, I keep a yeah, skateboard. <laughs> keep a deck. You know, when I, 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 had a, I, I broke my femur and cracked my hip. About three years ago. Nah, I, 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 yeah. Bruh, you known for having a goddamn wreck, and Remember I was I with did. you that night right before we went under Tahoe? When I split my head, man! Now, that was going, I ain't want to skip over that, but one night, I remember you were hosting figure eight. I used to come through there. Yeah. You made the albino dude cry that night. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot about that shit. You remember the albino dude started crying? Because you called him white. I kind of phased those. Bruh. This motherfucker got so mad. You remember he was in that van. But well, you might not remember. So Shouty and this. He but the dude was fucking with Shouty. I Yo. get to you. We went on stage? Now you was hosting. But he was trying to, you know, say shit back and forth. But Shouty was like, man, yeah. I don't hear that fucking shit. Yeah. But you know, he fucked him up. So the dude got mad. And then Shouty said something to him. I know I ain't in here arguing with no white motherfucker or something like that. And the motherfucker got, it was like a big albino dude. This motherfucker got so mad. This motherfucker went outside. Like, he walked outside. And he was driving a van, and the motherfucker just like started the car and just started revving the motherfucking engine. Like, bro, you're not scaring nobody in no fucking van. <laughs> Crazy shit I wow. seen. Wow, and that's my block though. That's Big my eight. Block. Yeah, like you finna get <laughs> big out eight. of the goddamn van. Wow, <laughs> man, man I, but like that was one of the that's the, some of the most fun I ever had in my life though, man. Just running through the city, hitting them little spots, yeah. man. Yeah, and I'm, then it's like one thing that like I know that my like the comedians that I came up under like. These niggas, everybody supported everybody room. Yeah. 
You get what yeah, I'm saying? We all pile up like up. even if a nigga wasn't going up, they were gonna pull up and make sure, you know, or make or like, hey, check on the, hey man, y'all finna go over there. Like they niggas understood that it was other shit to be done. You get what I'm saying? Now it's like you, you if you don't, if nigga take it personal, you don't stay for the whole show. Yeah. And nigga, I'm trying to go catch this other money. It was, it was, it was. It was that was some fun shit though. Yeah, the open mic, open mic was fun. Open mic was really I miss fun. just the little, I don't, not even the comedy clubs. I miss the rooms oh, that yeah. niggas had. Yeah, that would make you strong. Yeah. Having to go somewhere where it's not a comedy setting. Yeah. And make it comedy. And you they gotta, came for the crab legs. You got to yeah. And crab, watch the game. The crab legs, the blender, the TV. The yeah. fine ass bartender. Yeah, you got They came to see everything but the show. Yeah. the goddamn show. The, the people in stations that don't want to hear this shit. Yeah. You got to battle through all that, but that's what makes a strong comedian. Yeah. Right. That's why I, I recommend all comedians, young comedians, Internet comedians, first of all, stay on the stage. If you're gonna get money doing comedy, go on work out. Go on a chitlin circuit tour. You gonna sell it. Go on yeah. a chitlin circuit tour. Go down in the crevices and get practice. You know, uh, that's one thing I applaud Ti about doing comedy. Yeah, because he putting in work and he's feeding comedians. Yeah, he getting he getting comedians paid. Uh, and I saw him. I saw him perform one night. And I, uh, I was, I was, I was shocked. Really? Because he did well, and I, I, he a rapper, and I know him for being really serious. And I, yeah, that's what I, that's the funniest shit to me, though. Yeah. That nigga story, spent all that goddamn time being serious. Yeah, yeah. He wanted to laugh the whole goddamn time. Well, he, yeah. but, <laughs> till been at, been on the comedy scene. Been on the been scene since, yeah. since I, since my first, first started Tuesday nights at Uptown. Till was always one of my biggest promoters. Even before he got with Tiny, then when I had my night at Body Tap, yeah. the whole city come to Body Tap. We used to do women's wrestling. That's what we right. did. Uh, that's what we. Now, shout to tell you, he didn't had a whole lot of like outside of the the comedy shit. It ain't but a few comedians that really hosted a lot of strip club shit. Shout to Henry Welch and me. Yeah, I had and not. And not. That that's right. a whole nother lane because it's like I mean, it'd be uh, plenty of times where Shout had been on the road and they didn't call me to host some shit. Uh, um, remember we used to do the I used to do the uh, the um the camel toe contest at Dancers Elite. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, man. yeah, we had strip club right next to the comedy club. Exactly. Yeah. So slap a bitch contest. Yeah. Uh, stripper that. boxing. Oh, you remember? My, I, I, I slap. Oh my god. Don't say it. <laughs> you you there? You know what I'm talking about? Don't say it, bro. I'ma say it because I just remember that. <laughs> Shout out so, and been at the club for a lot of your fights and incidents. When nigga. I slapped the girl. See, don't say that. Don't say <laughs> I didn't that. Slap her. I no, slapped the booty. Oh, okay. Stop. Let me stop. <laughs> See? I'm yeah. trying Listen, to say. This is like 20 years ago. Shout out, I know. <laughs> like, stop. She stop. ready to come back with the story. No. Eddie on the radio show, too. I've been looking for you. I got damn it. That's who hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I thought you were Cat Williams. Sure, that I got I've hit been, though. I've been present for a lot of your incidents. She hit you for Somebody came from the bar and told me up. Ooh. See, we ain't even getting into all them. That's a whole nother. Hey, episode. but check this out. <laughs> yeah, Lowe said we don't need to talk <laughs> about it. I take it with me. Name, man. Not. See, now you want to edit this shit out. <laughs> he think but, about the incident but, now. No, no, but guess what? I live. I'm. 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 I'm I don't drink. Good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I used to drink it down. I used to drink it down. I'm a married man. Hey, that's married. good. Yeah. Coming up on my year anniversary. Yeah, man. Um, I, 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 I try to sow into the kids as far as, you know what I'm saying, putting positive on, on a narrative in an inner city, what I grew up in. Yeah. You know. Got some very talented kids, too, man. Yeah, they bad. Yeah. They got some bad. It's hard being a mentor. <laughs> so I say, you got to leave from a higher position. So you can't do it ground level. Well, yeah, there you go. Like, Where are we going to your house? I'd be like, we not. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, who was that before that? Man, wild comedy nights. Wow, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I like, I like, I like the open mic thing. You do? Uh, like, I want to go back in. I miss them rooms. I want to go back and start a room. You do? Yes. Well, you on the radio. You got to sit down. Like, you yeah, need a room. I, I, I want to start I want to start a room because I want to try to bring some structure back. Tell some of these young comedians how to really structure them a show. You know what I'm saying? Don't just go out and wait on people to laugh at something. You know, go practice practice in the mirror. I think the best thing they can hear is to just, just be intentional. Don't just go up there and just 
Yeah. And be wait, fucking around. It make it make it look like you ain't serious. Have a plan. You gotta have yeah. a plan. You gotta get excited about open yeah. mic night. Even if you're gonna go up there and fuck out. around, you need at least goddamn two or three. Yeah. If you're gonna fuck around, at least take you some to the fight. Yeah. These people, they not about to be like, oh, you working on something. These people done paid. Oh no, they you wanna see come, some shit. No, you better come and bring you better go bust them with. Uh, some of your short good jokes first and get them into it, then go into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come down, hit them with some real good. You know, you're going to get them into it and then bow. Yeah. Go into your new stuff. You got to get the crowd before you spring something new on them. But see, like you're saying, you're right, though. There's not too many OGs hanging around the open mic. They ain't going to fucking going. listen no way. When I, now, hey, niggas, like, when, I, like, when me and Nav came in, we listen to y'all now. You got to give it to Think how many motherfuckers started with y'all that didn't. Right. Think of the, all the niggas that was around when you was around that had to say that was sitting at my house the same way. <laughs> you right. And we were sitting there. And where right. they at? We don't fucking know. You right. We don't know. You know why? Because they fucking knew everything. <laughs> they knew every fucking thing. A lot of them motherfuckers still doing the same shit. They don't listen. You, right. you can't bring everything to everybody. They not gonna receive it the same way. That's why I say right. I, if I host the room, then I could kind of give them uh Critiques, you know what I'm saying? Like now, see that is right. That right there will show you how many motherfuckers you can really trust. This that's why I said I missed the rooms. There's so much shit in there. So if you was on the road and you had a room and you needed a motherfucker to host the room while you gone, who ain't finna try to fuck the room up or be hosting oh, yeah. or go to them people and say I host this motherfucker, you got now you gotta find that lets you know it ain't but a few motherfuckers you gonna call that I'm you calling. actually gonna trust that can be like man host my room for me, get the money that you supposed to get and I'm yeah, so they can try to steal cash from you, bro. You know how many motherfuckers you can call and say hey man host my room for me. And I, I got you 200, 150. Man, you still, but hell, them folk paying, you don't supposed to be worried yeah, about what them folk paying me. You know, I'm you know paying you, you to do me a you favor. You said that, this, all right, man. Yeah. That's how so many niggas done yeah, fell yeah. out. But, yeah. Because they feel like they supposed to get what you, what get. you get. No, you were substituting. <laughs> them people gave me that to find you. They don't get a substitute teacher to teach a salary. Now, man. now, now if, I get, if I had to get somebody to replace me, and it's like that. I just I'll be back, back next I'll week. I'll be in the back end of the, the class. I'll be like, you gonna pick up. Yo, you know that, what I'm saying? I keep finding yeah. into it. I'm gonna pick up. Yeah. And but I, that's what I'm saying. If you call me and say, low host my room. I got 300 And I say, all right, bet. And them people had me $1,000. Nigga, I'm supposed to. That's what I'm saying. Give me my $700? <laughs> what? I ain't got nothing to do with you. What? <laughs> give me my $700? I ain't got a goddamn thing to I do with you. I built this room. Yeah, my name exactly. on it. No, nigga, my face yeah, on the floor. Everybody in there, bitch, they thought yeah. I was going to be out of the room. They trusted exactly. me to bring I'm going to take yes. a hit. Yeah. I'm going to take a hit. Yes. I had to be selective. You know how many people wanted to host this? You done went ahead and fucked the room up. Now it's going to be six weeks. I done came here 11 weeks pool. by myself when y'all wouldn't even drive out here. I told you when we nobody. had the money. Man, boy. Yeah. That's how a lot of niggas fell out. I believe it. I'm, shit, it ain't no joke. Yeah, I only, I only, I'm very selective. But you were saying earlier, though, like, you was, they was booking a lot of comedians that didn't have the time. Man. The game need that type of shit. It's, it's part. It's just like when you watch the fucking ecosystem, nigga. Hey, the birds fall out the sky. The worms eat the birds. The bird, the fucking uh, beetles eat the worms. Like it's you gotta have this shit. You know how I many? How much money I made because a motherfucker couldn't complete the assignment? How many times a nigga got too drunk Friday couldn't do Saturday and Sunday? How many motherfuckers were too scared to come to the Sunday? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many motherfuckers were like, man, I, hey, man, can you? Mm. Shit, ended up with a weekend. Yeah, yeah. All them times where comedians fuck up on the road, they call somebody else. Oh, yeah. Somebody gonna yeah. get it. You get it? I'm and so, minus the money you fucked up, I'm about to go get this money. Somebody gotta do the job. Yeah. So, if they got a motherfucker from the internet, <laughs> who can't who do one show Thursday night and he can't do seven minutes. Yeah, just, and they yeah. already done agreed that this bill now they done brought the bag out for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Comedians don't even know a lot of comedians don't even know. It's levels to this bag shit. The same people who will pay you two thousand dollars for a weekend will pay you twenty five, yeah. will pay yep. you forty, yeah. will yep. pay you fifty. It's just that you don't make that kind of money. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't sell tickets. Yep. Motherfuckers who sell tickets get, get a bag. Ticket money. 
You be going out to the See, these money. the same motherfuckers who be wanting to go out there on hopes and dreams. Like, I'm funny. That ain't going to sell no goddamn ticket. Yeah, they had to do... Yeah, people got to, you got to create a demand. Yeah, they'll pay for the whole comedy club and get right. you. No, just a restaurant for them. They want you to yeah, come in and get that food and them drinks. So, they but listen, so when they see you come and do your weekend for 2000 and you do all right, they don't really make no money. They sending people home early. So now that they need somebody to come replace you, they finna pay you more than they ever paid you just to come and go after this nigga on the internet who can only do seven minutes. Yeah, they know no, this. You got, oh, you got, you got to be better. You got, to, you got to prove. You, we don't want to get no money back. <laughs> right. So we need somebody gonna come and make you forget about it. Exactly. Yeah. You gonna come yeah. and get? Come on. And what y'all paying? Oh, this weekend we got you. We got you fifty nine hundred. Who the fuck be making up these numbers? The, the Ain't nobody $5,900. 9, nigga. <laughs> Who wrote this up? Who the fuck wrote this up? They already got it together. How did you figure out that was enough? They done took the percentage Nigga, where's out. that other 100000 Oh, man, I, I had to shut a club thousand. down one night, bro. You're not talking over about... Hundred, he's oh, 100, no, over 100000 He's talking about thousand. where that's 100000 oh. for this weekend. Bruh. I ain't gonna say the establishment because Don't, the people made it right. It. The people who really run this shit made it right. I was working at this club. You know, when you go to a certain establishment in the Midwest and you do a run, you may do a certain set of comedy clubs with the same name in different cities because it's a franchise. Right. So one of these franchises had a dirty, crooked, low-down, meth-smoking, scab-picking son of a bitch. <laughs> that was the manager. This motherfucker was clearly high on that shit. Because he's sitting right here. I'm looking right at the numbers. You know, the paper, the payout paper. Yeah. And Pay I already know. Right, right numbers. But see, this is the, the thing. Numbers, the I make them send me that before I agree to this. Because mm -hmm. I need all this shit. Y'all don't know how to make express shit. Yeah. I need the best case scenario and the worst one, too. Mm -hmm. So I already got one copy of this. So I'm looking at it. It ain't nowhere near mine. Right. Lock the door. Nobody going home. <laughs> Call the people. This motherfucker's stealing money from me right now. I'm in the club. I'm flipping tables over and everything. Give me mine. Man. Man. I ain't never seen them people come down there so fast that at the, because at the neck, they was like, we'll get you taken care of. Don't worry uh, about it. We'll look into people it. People who own this motherfucker. The real people. Nah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. So they come to the club the next night. Bosses. Pay, pay him off. Pay him off a little bit for all his troubles and the money they stole. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. So that's why we... Yeah, it happened. That really happened, bro. But I'm just saying, if you just out here thinking you funny and you don't take care of what the fuck needs to be took care of, they'll get your ass. Even the best. Yeah. Even the best. No, they're going to lowball you. They, every time. When I start... Uh, but that's the business. You, got, you don't get what you're supposed to get. You get what you negotiate. Yep. So when they hand you your envelope, take your money out and get that motherfucking envelope to them people because you don't even want to get caught up in that shit. Oh, yeah, you know. I, <laughs> I tell them, don't pay for the room. Mm -mm. Don't pay for the room. For you don't need to know where I stay. Yeah, they, I'm talking about don't pay for the room. They no, put, pay for the room. Oh, yeah. The comedy club. They're, no, they're trying to say, we had to pay for the room. For no, room. don't do yeah, it. I'd just I mean, rather take my loss then. Yeah, yeah, think I, I'm yeah, just, don't pay for the room. Don't, don't give me no false sense of No, nah, fuck that. I want to see who came to see me because they use that pay for the room. And they been on paper the room, all right, yeah. They, they gave away 50 tickets and so But see, that's, a lot of that shit just be ego, though. You got to be comfortable. Like, when you take that deal and you agree to the door deal, mm -hmm. you got to be comfortable if 10 people come or if 100 people come. Yep. That's where them people really know that you ain't playing about your money. Because if you go out there and you still perform for the 10 that paid, them the ones, them the 10 that fuck with you from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. All the people who love your ass don't get, they can't make it to the 7 o'clock. 9 o'clock show sold out. Mm -hmm. But you got to take the L with the, with that shit. That's how, yeah. That's how you really. But see, that when, when you got to perform for those 10 people, that's when those rooms, those open mics come in handy. That club set. Yeah, the club set. Yeah. Because you can't, but you, you might not have but 10, 12 people at an open mic, especially if you popping in, popping out, working out. But working out with those small crowds, you learn how to get instant. Yeah. And, and you come out with the best material with some, um, you know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't cheat them. Nah. Yeah. And you can take your time in them, motherfucker. What you rushing for? Yeah, it's more personable. So that why, that's why I say comedians should go do the chitlin' circuit. Yeah, you gotta go work out. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's well, like I'm actually gym. doing the chitlin circuit now. It's, <laughs> Shit, that's that's the most fun you going. Yeah, it's the yeah. most fun I'm having. When you go and you hit a goddamn, you had the most fun somewhere you never expected. Yeah, them be them. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. 
Yeah. As a single comedian starting at 18 and being on the road. I started at 22. Yeah. 22. Yeah. Or 25. See, we still young. Got, got years up under us, you know. I can't believe I'm celebrating my 30th year of comedy this year. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't 30 years old. <laughs> I feel I feel great, you know. <laughs> Niggas are saying anything, boy. I ain't 30. Father 19, that's Father 19, that's my brand forever young. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what they, I wonder what the hell it yeah, was. Yeah, Father 40, buddy. Thank you, 19. Hey. Hell no. <laughs> I don't let them call me aunt. I be like, I'm cuz. Uh. I'm aunt. Uh. Fuck it. Like you better just be aunt. Call me Cub, bro. I'm on <laughs> the streets over with. These niggas got 300 round drum. I like just to OG. shoot a nigga in the foot three times. Man, I stay, I stay outside the perimeter, and I love it. I live in Fayetteville. They, the police still bad out there. Hey, That's I ain't good. gonna tell you where I live, but I, if you come over my house, I know you. It wasn't by accident. Yeah, you ain't no fucking way. You the studio just ain't by over. accident. I ain't know why I was coming to. Good. That's exactly like we like it. Inconvenience <laughs> out the way. They say 47 more miles. Exactly. Oh, this was the last yeah. street. We out. We out. <laughs> <laughs> Put us on the last exit before you hit the country. You heard me. Everything after this, you don't want to fuck with. Yeah. <laughs> I, you right. You goddamn right. You really don't want to fuck around over here. You did. This is the exit, not to fuck around, no. Bro, from here to the motherfucking highway, I am the safest driver. Nigga. Oh, for real? Man, do ooh, not ooh. fuck around down here. I seen the police pull the police over down here. I used to stay on this motherfucking road. Yeah. They do not play. I know it's the, five police departments between here and... Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going say I know the sheriff. Well, he's still... Shit. Uh, I, know you get the, I know the hey, sheriff. Hey, you I keep it card in my wallet, right? Hey. I keep it card in my wallet. Man, I speak to his deputy. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh... You're getting the he came on the show and got elected. For real? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he go to church with me. Word. Yeah, we go to church. Yeah, you're a good citizen. I be out here. He's a good guy. He's yeah. a good guy. And that's what politics need, good guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you got to be a little crooked to, to, to make some shape. I mean, it's a crooked system. Yeah. We just got to find the right people who going to look out for the people, too. You can still be crooked, but don't just be selfish. We got too many selfish people. I ain't yeah, like, no. Like, we can't tell them folks how to do their job because we don't know what the fuck be going on. Like, it might be some crookedness in the crookedness. Where you going to So, your whoever friends, they though? being crooked with, they just getting the kick. Like, somebody getting a better deal than them. So, whoever they negotiate yeah. with. You get what I'm saying? So, that's just part of it. But then we got to have some motherfuckers who look out for the people, too. Like, you can't steal 100% of the money. You gotta steal like sixty percent. Like we gotta cap you on your yeah, stealing. 40. You got yeah, yeah. Well, kick back forty. Like, Don't steal. we got too many motherfuckers stealing hundred percent? Take up, take care of our communities. You can be. No, nah, we gotta be, take care of our get, communities. No, no, if you got the budget. No, nah, they don't. Commissioners, Listen, elected officials. That shit at local level. It take too long. Uh -huh. We gotta do it first. Like we was on. That's what really got. We started. You get what I'm saying? We started fixing our shit. Then oh. every, time, every time we start fixing our shit, they tear our shit up. Yeah. We already done seen what it looked like when everybody get together and then Black oh, Wall Street. But then, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't want us really to get in position. So we just going to have to, all the niggas that's left, that's like conscious enough to make it happen, we could do it. But we don't have enough support. No, we're not going to stick together. No, it ain't, it, it ain't going to be that. That dollar is very powerful, right? To everybody else. It don't mean it, shit to us. It don't us. mean shit to us because we don't retain it. You know what I'm saying? We don't retain it. That's why I ain't, I ain't like, the government, uh, the current administration, all that, I don't want no food stamps. I don't want... For why, my why would you want I don't want... Like, that's what they want to give us, and they want they to give us handouts. And, 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 and hand me us, some. And, hand, no, 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 no. <laughs> but guess what? Guess what? You, you, you go with the other people... They giving out business loans. They giving out grants. They giving out opportunities. But that's what that's why they that's why it be back and forth. I want opportunities. That's how they split it up. They gonna give you some business shit. Then they gonna give you some bullshit. That's how it go. Don't you see it's just back and forth? They pass that shit back and forth like a blunt. They don't give a fuck. They already know who the next five motherfuckers gonna be. They don't give a fuck. It's a show. Like you said, you ain't even crooked enough to even know how crooked the shit get. You right. That's just America, bro. I, I pay, if Trump you want to survive in America, just do what the crazy white people do. If they start buying guns, 
buy you some guns. Buy you some. If they go to Dick's Sporting Goods on Saturday morning and buy all the tents, get you some motherfucking tents. Whatever they mad about, act like you mad about it too. <laughs> we live in Georgia. That's the only chances we got. Whatever they, because look, soon as we don't, like when we fuck with some shit, they don't fuck with it no more. Yeah. We get behind the shit, they get behind, they gonna switch. Mm hmm. Yeah. What if they come, like, when well, we finally worked it out, black people, we got, no, nah, we, we straight. We don't even want the money. What you mean? Yeah, we figured out them issues already. You ain't seen the numbers. Black crime all the way down. We done got together. We selling, we in the tech industry now. <laughs> we don't want nothing. We selling computers and shit. They, that would fuck them up. They only don't want to give us shit because we want something. We don't act like we take four years, act like we don't want shit. Y'all got it, white folks. Pick who y'all gonna pick. We working on the black community. They oh, need yeah. us. Cause, cause we go, right. yeah, we too gullible. Bruh, if it wasn't we for too us, gullible. they wouldn't know Be where to fucking live. Yeah. What's the most valuable property in the whole city? The motherfucking ghetto. They can't like nothing unless we like it first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if yeah. we start fucking with Taylor Swift tomorrow, they would kick that bitch out the community. <laughs> you know, you see how fast they cut Miley Cyrus off? Yeah. She had to sing her little white girl hard out to get them white folks to forgive her. What's and they did? didn't want to do it. They were like, oh, she was Hannah Montana. Get over here, Miley. <laughs> white folks will kick you out. Wait. Yeah. Justin Timberlake just got his white in his back. Yeah, they'll get rid of your ass. Look how mad they got when Beyonce made a country album. Ooh! That's not country music. Bruh, yeah. racism is capitalism. Oh, you right. Bro, I be studying this shit, right? I was watching some shit this old white dude said. Toyota make the best cars you could buy, right? Right. But did nobody want to buy no fucking luxury Toyota? Because it's a Toyota. You just, they make little bitty trucks and cars that don't tell up. They not going, America's too racist to buy a luxury Toyota. Japanese car. What you think Lexus stand for? Luxury export to the United States. <laughs> Lexus. Got y'all niggas. Got y'all ass again. Got y'all niggas. <laughs> Got y'all niggas. niggas. And everybody know it's a Toyota in the goddamn way. You pop the fucking hood, it say Toyota. It say Toyota right there. Yeah, it, 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 it ain't got, you can look at it. Yeah. Dog, I'm telling you, man, that's the only fucking way you gonna make it in America. Have you some shit for sale, do what the white folks is doing, and act like every, everything they mad about, you be mad about it. They fake mad, you be fake mad. What we giving a fuck about this week? We don't even know. No, you know. We don't know. Shit, this is inflation. We damn near in a recession damn. around this motherfucker. Shit, what you mean, damn near? Uh -huh. Yeah, they don't, the, they don't want to call it one because it's Charlie, election season. It's over with. I, I don't know what the fuck that mean. You know what a recession means. That means white folks ain't got no money. So that's that's real then. These are people who stole money. They don't got shit? They motherfucker ain't. Come on, man. How the, fuck, how the fuck we live in the country that's the richest country, but everybody broke? Where the money at? Bro, everybody broke. If you watch the news, everybody broke. The teachers broke. The post office broke. The truck drivers broke. We, we fucked up. Everybody. Everybody fucked up. No, don't turn the music on now. I'm telling you. It wasn't fucked up at first. It wasn't fucked up four years ago. Yes, it was. This shit was so fucked up four years ago, they shut the whole world down and made us think it was because of some other shit. That's that's how I broke my You ever be so broke as just take off? And go to sleep. They just lay down. That's what the fuck happened. You talking about this damn near recession. Nigga, you think that shit had something to do with some germs? This shit, they said four years ago, this all this shit would have killed us. Yeah. Think about this shit. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't go for that shit. I believed it. I didn't. I didn't believe that shit two minutes. I believed it. I didn't believe that shit. Uh, I didn't believe it. I knew it was something. I seen shit happen too many times. Because when a nigga said that they had the shit and they couldn't taste food no more, I was like, oh, this is what that, okay. See, that's what they do. What they, 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 how they, come. they come, they come in to, with fear. So every time they come, they come in to, to make you scared. You know what I'm that's saying? That's how that shit works. That's work. how they control you. Yeah, exactly. They control you through fear. So they come out Act and say, like you scared. Oh, they got weapons of mass destruction. They do. And they're going to run up in here and take everything they got and not find no weapons of mass destruction. So They didn't find them. They didn't find them because it wasn't none. No, nah, they, they got them. They just wasn't where they said they was at. Now, the motherfuckers who they made you believe had them didn't have them. 
the other motherfuckers had them. The same people who told you they had. How the fuck they know? You got to have this shit to know that that's what the fuck that is. This ain't just some regular shit. Everybody don't got this. So how you knew what it was? Yeah, exactly. Nah, yeah. I mean, you know, fuck it. Yeah, it's a control thing, man. Yeah, man. Everybody got some of them shits. Why they ain't go to the other places? They know who got them. Yeah, they know. They, they know where the fuck the weapons they are. They the <laughs> and I'm just saying, the way they, they scare us up. Bro, this you know Georgia. They got weapons of mass destruction every fucking well. Go to a pawn shop. They got 357s and all kind of shit hanging <laughs> off the wall. Oh, yeah, they got, I got all, all that shit. All these is weapons. You can get a, you they can get say one shit. AR-15 is a weapon of mass destruction. Oh, they ain't been going to get no guns. Oh, hell no. Well, well, Thank you. They, they ain't going to get no guns. No. No. Because they, they, they not putting put their guns up. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's, in, that's why anytime anybody running for any office going there talking about guns, uh, agriculture, hey, you hey, are... Hey, wait a minute. God damn it, this too, is too good. Stop. <laughs> we finna stop this shit. Y'all ain't about to get the 85 South shut down on here saying all this real shit. <laughs> now, especially not on this episode. Hell no. I know that right. You go over here saying real shit. You did, now you done, when you said the G word, Second Amendment, you did not want them people in the comments. But they don't know me and you in the NHRA. Right. They don't know it. We are really I am um, Americans. Charlie, you see what you started, man? Huh? You started all this. This whole conversation. Man. Because you on a path to wellness and greatness and counting calories and shit. I just, I just want my people to be good. They gonna be good one day. I think it's a little, it's gonna be a little bit more suffering, but I'm predicting that it's, it's getting gradually better. Yeah, it's all about. We got more access to information. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's the thing. Information. Access to the information, yeah. knowing. We're getting better. We're I healing. I have to teach myself. Exactly. And so me having to teach myself, I want better for the people that don't have to go through that. Yeah, then get you a mentor. Young people. I used to laugh at Negroes. I got, I got a mentor. Oh, I don't know that that lane jump. No. Mentors help. Mentors yeah, exactly. help shape your life. Yeah. They've they been through it. They can tell you. Yeah. It ain't just no old somebody trying to shape your life or ruin your teens. Yeah, Sometimes like you about. need to just hear a different perspective. Yes. You don't know everything. Absolutely. Oh, so, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm open open mic. I melt in front of the mic. Hey, man. Word economy. Stage presence. Beginning, ending. Wow, get out of there. That's hard. You out here hitting them on the radio every morning, too, bro. Make sure you tell them to listen to you. Yes, man. Oh, yeah. Morning radio. Young Jock in the Streets Morning Takeover. It's cool. We've been going like seven years. That's hard. Yeah. Boom. Keep that going, man. Congratulations. Yeah. It slowed me down. That's good. Yeah. You got to get up early for that gotta shit. Got to get up early. Can't you be in the club. Up, boy. Hell no. Nah, club hours, you getting up to go to the radio station. Yeah. I, yeah. I be passing folks. They be, I, I was riding this morning. There was some guys in some uh, SRT. There was in some challenges and stuff. No, they in the club. I'm like, man, they still be. They... Passing stuff, putting the ones up, on the way to work, got a cup of coffee. No. <laughs> that's, that's when you hit the break and just let them go. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Let them go. Go what? ahead, nephew. Tell them streets up at Hellcat. Okay, young nigga, scat. Scat that mug. Go on, hit all them donuts Do your so thing. I can go. Let me go on ahead and go so you can cut up. Yeah. Let me, it, let, me, let me pass, young nigga. I ain't here for oh, all no that. Smoke. I don't want no smoke, bro. But if I catch you in that Camaro or something... Well, all smoke. All smoke. Catch you in one, if I'm in one of them I rocks or something. Gonna let them have it. Oh, my goodness. We finna tear this motherfucker up. <laughs> they might have to come get this bitch. <laughs> ooh, ooh. You been working on your own car? Nah, I buy them. Buy them already? Nah, I buy up. them, and then I visualize that shit, and then I put the people in position who can bring the vis like the visualizations together. You feel me? I got a nice everybody little team. Everybody got their role. Yeah, everybody play their part. I've been building motorcycles. That's hard. Yeah. You know, I like the motorcycles. I've been building, like, trikes. Okay. ATVs. Stuff like that. Yeah. You know, that small ATVs. Yeah. I know you've been on the motorcycle for a minute, man. You still in the bike club? Yeah. Number one stunner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For life. Number one stunner. Shout out to all my number one stunners everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got along. Got in the bike club. Got on the bike scene. Yeah. Yo, that's a cool scene. You know what I'm saying? Some good brothers. And travel all over the country. We're national. So I go all around. So I'm, I be doing like ATV shouting. That's what I call myself with in the bike community. Uh, 
And so I've been working on just building, building a little motorcycle. It started off, I got cheated on a four-wheeler I bought for my bonus daughter. Okay. And then the guy charged me four hundred something dollars for service. And I said, never again. I went on YouTube and learned how to do it myself. I got one that need a carburetor right I, now. I got you. What? I, got, I need a carburetor on mine. What? I got a bad mother. I got carburetor at how? <laughs> I bet you do. I do at McClooney. What you want to do? I bring it over there and put it on it. I just uh, I just built some uh, what you call them? Uh, CT two hundred uh, Coleman mini bikes. Oh, okay. With the Predator motors. I be doing on the mini bike. bike? Yeah, I be doing ninety on the. You mini be bike. riding the mini bike? Yeah. Oh hell no. Do ninety on the mini bike? Ooh. Pop yeah. freight motor. Ooh, and all be shaking like. <laughs> no, you tripping? Like a motherfucker, boy. You tripping? <laughs> Tear your goddamn knees off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that adrenaline. I, yeah, I bet you do. But look here, man. I know this your first time stopping through here, but don't let it be the last, bro. Man, I like it, man. Good conversation. Yeah, man, you know we're chilling. You got to make a wish. You know the couch magic. Oh, for real? Yeah, anything you say on the couch going to happen. I don't know if nobody told you, but that shit real, bro. Anything you say on the couch will happen. Damn. Gotta think hard. <laughs> Why you thinking? You know I couldn't let you leave here. I'm taking you some of this. Hey. Feel me? Oh, yeah. You feel oh, me? Oh, yeah. Like that? Oh, man. Whole, whole layout.